John here guys and today we're talking about the AKK Race VTX. The $9 VTX that is taking the community by storm now. Many of you know I flew the AKK FX3 which is also a very reasonably priced $16 VTX uh, for quite a while. Now that thing is 20 by 20. The race version came out sometime later and was even more economical. Now this one only goes up to 200 milliwatts, which for most of us that race, it's totally fine. And it also has an MMCX connector built in that we all need. One of the things I do like is that it comes completely wired up and that it is completely flat on one side, similar to one of the other popular VTXs on the market. Now that flat side means if you're running a flight controller like the Pyroflip um, F4 OSD, the Hyperlite, that you can mount these back to, to back to each other like this and they will flick, sit completely flush against each other. I really uh, have enjoyed this thing. It's so easy. Um, I don't use the power out on this thing that are those like second set of red and black wires. Um, it comes with this little manual with a little channel diagram. So what I personally do is I wire it up like this and I remove those second set of ground and five volt wires that would normally go right here. And then I use those two extra wires to go onto my receiver. Uh, so <laughs> it really helps your build move along because it, you're always needing those extra two wires for a receiver. So on the end, you have your five volt and uh, ground inputs. And as you can see, I have this flight controller completely ready to go. It does come with an MMCX pigtail um, to SMA, but it is a straight version. So for me personally, on a lot of my builds, I need a right angle version um, that I have to buy separately like this one right here. You can see inside that build um, because a straight one would just come straight out and I can't really use it. This, this uh, VTX also has a microphone on board. Now, I don't really find that particularly useful, but uh, some people do, and it's kind of cool that it's included for such a low price. This thing also has um, no LED chip right there. I find that on like this FX3 or a lot of the other um, things, those would get chipped off in a hard crash, so I don't really mind missing out on that weight in order to keep it even um, down further down. I do kind of like the connector, but a lot of people don't. So if you want something without a connector where the wires are, are a little safer, one thing that I like to do if I have this sitting out towards the side is I put a little hot glue on those wires just to keep them safe from getting yanked on. Uh, a better mounting position would probably be to have this front to back, honestly, so that those wires were not sticking out the side. But um, I build up so many of these that I just kind of try different layouts sometimes to see what works. Uh, if you watched my recent antenna video where I'm trying to test medium range, I won't call it long range because I only go about 300 yards, but that's the farthest I go. I'm using this $9 VTX. Um, so I'm really truly trying to get a test of those antennas in that video. So I wanted to use the cheapest VTX possible to just, just show how good those antennas are. Um, but I was quite pleasantly surprised that such a budget VTX was able to go that far without any problems, stay completely clear. So it lives up to its name being the race. Um, I think I've all told ordered 10 or 15 of these things because they're just so cheap. People are always needing a spare VTX out of race. So I usually keep a couple with me and now I have enough to do builds um, for quite some time. Um, some people prefer the Nano, um, which has a UFL and they just kind of lay it somewhere inside. But I really have grown accustomed to the security of having an MMCX connector. So if you need one of these at a budget price, this is the way to go, guys. The Race by A. Woo! 